great. Hi, everybody. So today we're going to introduce uh, Redox. So you've seen Redox before. You have an idea of what it means. Um, hopefully, in your from last year, you remember some things about it. And so that's good, because I'm going to do this kind of quickly, go through this review with you. I will spend a little bit more time on balancing um, reactions, excuse me, in acidic and basic conditions, so that you can see what that's like. These are the you know, simple definitions for oxidation reduction. Oxidation is the loss of electrons. Um, generally, they call it oxidation because it normally happens in the presence of oxygen. Iron's a really good example of that. Iron, if you leave it out in air, the oxygen in the air will oxidize it. A substance that's made out of pure iron will, over time, rust. Um, this is showing an oxidation, this loss of electrons. You can see some of the hallmarks here for an oxidation reduction reaction. Um, one of them is the idea that it actually is getting more positive. So the iron's becoming Fe plus 2. And you can see that it's losing those electrons. They're coming out as a product. So the um, electrons will appear on the right side of the reaction because they're being lost. Notice that the reaction, the Fe is getting more positive. Um, that's a sign that also that you're losing electrons. Reduction is the gain of electrons. So when you gain electrons, you'll become more negative. And you can see here, here's my oxygen. And now it is gaining electrons and becoming O negative 2. So notice here in, an, in a reduction half reaction, as it's called, that the electrons are added to the left side of the equation because they're being gained. The, um, the species, in this case oxygen, is becoming more negatively charged. And so we have this situation where we're going from O2 to O negative 2. So, you know, how can you tell if something's being oxidized or reduced in a reaction? Um, well, you can compare the oxidation numbers, look for changes. If you notice in the two examples that are highlighted in green here, an element by itself like iron starts as 0 and then it becomes um, plus 2. Um, and then with oxygen, O, oh, it starts at 0 and becomes negative 2. And so you can tell that there's a change in oxidation number. Also, in general, any synthesis, decomposition, single replacement, um, combustion type reactions, those are going to be redox reactions. If you're ever unsure if something's a redox reaction, just assign the oxidation numbers to them, and from there, you know, you can, you can go and see what's happening. If you forgot how to assign oxidation numbers, well, um, they are in an earlier chapter, I believe chapter four, um, those notes um, on solution stoichiometry, um, you can, I'll put them up in the description of where to find them, so that this way you can look at the definitions for uh, oxidation and reduction, assigning oxidation numbers, um, that kind of stuff. Now in IB chemistry, you know, they also have an alternative definition for oxidation and reduction. Um, and generally they use this definition when you're not dealing with ionic substances. If you're dealing with a covalent substance and there's not really this true loss or gain or transfer of electrons, well then how could you be oxidizing or reducing? And so when the IB, the International Baccalaureate, uses um, a definition, they also go by this definition where they consider oxidation to be the gain of oxygen and the loss of hydrogen. And this is not unique to IB before you start, you know, thinking, oh, that IB. Um, when you get into college and you start taking biochemistry courses, um, organic chemistry courses, you'll see that a lot of those professors, especially biochemistry, will talk about oxidation in terms of oxygen gaining and um, or hydrogen gaining. And so we have the reduction here as the removal of oxygen, the addition of hydrogen. Any of you AB bio folks out there, um, you know, go ask your AP bio teacher and uh, they'll tell you this definition because this definition is really what is sort of accepted among biologists, biochemists. It's much more useful to them than thinking about the transfer of electrons like we do in chemistry. Now, this is the, from uh, the IB textbook, and um, it shows you different types of charges that, you know, are commonly found for these different elements. You don't have to, <coughs> you don't have to memorize most of these um, for IB. For AP, I would say that you should know the main, the main charges of them. Um, and I can highlight some of them here. Um, you can do that in this blue color here. Like, I would know chromiums plus 2, plus 3, and plus 6. Um, I would know manganese um, 
uh, plus 2 and <coughs> plus 7. Um, I would know iron plus 2 plus 3, cobalt 2 and 3, nickel 2, uh, copper 1 and 2, zinc 2. Um, those I would definitely know. Uh, they come up a lot. And these are the transition metals. So the ones that I highlighted on the screen, those are really the most important ones. Okay. Um, so one of the things that you're going to need to be able to do is balance simple redox reactions. And so here's a, an oxidation reduction reaction that's happening without the presence of an aqueous solution. It's just happening um, solid and gaseous compounds. And so the first thing is you assign the oxidation numbers. Remember that elements that are alone by themselves, that they don't have any charges. So this would be for my iron zero and my oxygen zero. Oxygen's almost always negative two unless it's in a compound that um, is a peroxide or with fluorine. And iron is therefore plus two to balance the charges. I then look for changes, so iron is becoming Fe plus 2, and oxygen is becoming negative 2, and I write the half reaction, so iron is becoming Fe plus 2. I notice that the charges are not balanced, so I need to balance with electrons, two electrons on the more positive side. This would be my oxidation, it's becoming more positive, it's losing electrons. My reduction would be my O2. Notice the diatomic, I keep it together, so then I need 2 O minus choose on this side to balance the number of oxygens. The charge for this is a difference of minus four, two negative twos. So that means that I would need four electrons added to the left side. Now I need to balance the number of electrons between the two of them. This has four electrons, this has two. Just in case you didn't hear that and I didn't really mention it, this is the reduction reaction. So now I need to balance it based on the number of electrons, so I would multiply the top by 2. And multiplying the top by 2 would give me um, 2Fe yields 2Fe plus 2 plus 4 electrons. All right, so I had to do some editing of the video, um, and so I was balancing this reaction, and then I realized that I had made a big mistake. And that's something that I want to bring up. Um, what we did before was we had uh, balancing regular redox reactions. This is going to be in acidic conditions. And something that I want to talk to you about is these are difficult, and sometimes you make a mistake. And I was making this video, and I picked out this reaction to do, and I actually made a mistake with it. I had to go back, delete that part of the video, start here. So this is the reaction that I want to balance. This is in an aqueous solution that has acidic conditions. And because of that, we need to consider a lot more when we balance the reactions. So here's a reaction between dichromate and nitrous acid forming a chromium plus 3 ion and nitrate ion. So the first thing I would do is I would assign oxidation numbers. And so this one is plus 6. Um, this becomes plus 3, so we can tell there's a change there. And it's plus 4, and we can tell that it becomes plus 5 if we assign the oxidation numbers there. So now, um, I look for simple ions. I see that chromium plus 3 is a simple ion, but it's connected to this chromate ion over here. So the second step is write half reactions for simple ions. I don't really have any simple ions in this case, so I'm going to go straight for step three, keeping the polyatomic ions together and writing half reactions. So we have the, chromate, the dichromate ion, and it's becoming Cr plus three. Something that I don't mention up here, which we should add for step three, is that you should also balance for the number of atoms other than oxygen and hydrogen. Step four and step five deal with balancing the hydrogens and the oxygens in the acidic situation. But here, um, we're going to also balance the chromiums. We need two chromiums. Now we can go to step four. It says use water to balance the oxygens. I have seven oxygens, so I'm going to use seven waters. I then need to balance the hydrogens. So on this side, on the left here, I'm going to have my 14 hydrogens. I then need to balance the charges in step number six. So on the left, I have 14 positives and two negatives. That's plus 12. On the right, I have plus six. So the difference is a charge of six. Now the left is more positive by six, so I'm going to add my six electrons to that side. So now this half reaction is balanced. Let's balance the HNO2 reaction. So I keep the H in the HNO2. It's a weak acid. It'll stay together, and it forms NO3. I have a difference of uh, one oxygen and um, one hydrogen, so I start with the oxygens. I add a water to this side. 
I now have three hydrogens on the left side, so I need three H pluses over here. If I go through and I try and balance the charges at this point, um, the, the left has zero, um, and the right has um, plus three and minus one, so it needs two electrons. So now I have my half reactions, but they're not balanced with each other. This one down here, it has um, two electrons versus the six electrons up there. So how can I balance the number of electrons? Well, I can multiply the bottom reaction by three. Doing that, I would have three waters, three, three, this, oh no, sorry, we're going to multiply by two to get six. No, we're multiplying by three, sorry. Okay, three, 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 this becomes nine, and then this becomes six electrons. So now let's go through and let's uh, add these together and cross out like terms. So the first thing to be crossed out here is going to be my waters. I have um, three waters. Over here I have seven, so I'm going to be left with four waters. Um, my six electrons can get crossed out with my six electrons and my hydrogens. So now my nine hydrogens here can get crossed out with 14, leaving me five. When I write this all out together, I'm going to have 5H plus plus Cr2O7 2 minus plus 3HNO2, yielding on the right side 2Cr plus 3 plus 3NO3 minus plus 4H2Os. And now I need to go through the process of checking. And what I did last time was, um, was I started balancing it and I realized, oh my god, I didn't do this right. Let's hope I have better luck this time. Let's start with the H's. On the left, I have 5 and 3 is 8 H's. On the right, I have 4 times 2 in the H2O. That's 8 H's. On the left, I have 2 CR's. On the right, I have 2 CR's. On the left, I have 7 O's and I have 6 O's in here. That's 13. On the right side, I have 3 times 3 is 9, plus 4 in the waters is 13. Everything seems to balance with atoms. Now I need to balance with charges. On the left, I have 5 plus, and I have um, 2 minus, so that is 3 plus on the left. And on the right, I have 6 plus for the CRs and 3 minuses, so that also adds up to plus 3. This is a balanced reaction in acidic conditions. This was not easy. I messed it up the first time. When you see this on an exam, you have to either you know, say, I'm going to go all in and try to make this work, or I am going to skip this question. It's one of those. It's difficult. It requires tedious counting. But if you do it right, it's pretty rewarding to get this question right. Didn't feel good the first time. Um, you can also balance in basic conditions. And this we can do in class. I'll put up a problem here for you to try um, for homework. If you follow the steps, the only difference is, is that there's this step here where you multiply each of the half reactions by hydroxide to cancel out the hydrogens. So for example, if I wanted to put this into basic conditions, I would have to add five OHs to the left to make it H2O, and then the waters would cancel out, and I'd have five OH minus on the right side. But I'll leave one of those up. You can try it out, um, and then we can go over it in class together. Uh, so I will put that up and um, show it to you. So go ahead and copy down this equation here and um, try and balance it and see how you do. And then we can go over that one in class and can practice more of these tomorrow. All right, thanks so much for watching.